Hello and welcome to Spring Training. In this video we are going to do the basic setup that is required for Spring development. We will see the ID, the, the Eclipse uh, installation. We will also see the basic Tomcat installation and we will download the uh, Spring related dependencies, the jars. And the, the framework charts itself and we'll do a basic setup to look at the source code. The first thing that we need to do is we need to get an IDE and the IDE that we are going to use is Eclipse Juno. This is a very famous IDE, no doubt about it. So you all must be aware of this already. Uh, it started with Callisto which is very old. Currently we are at uh, Kepler, the stable version and Luna is planned in 2014. Uh, Kepler has recently been released so I've been using Juno so I'll stick to it. I won't move on to Kepler and that's what I'm gonna show it to you. As far as Tomcat is concerned there are various versions right from uh, version 3 to version 8 but I'll be sticking to the version 6. So let's go back to the slides. Uh, this is the URL that you need to click. Uh, if you click on this URL you are going to see this screen uh, in which there will be different whatever is the type of your machine you will select it. So I'll just select Windows 64 bit and then you can download the Eclipse Juno from there. Uh, this this is the direct link if you just want to go there and download. What I have already done is I have downloaded it here and it is already uh, the jar uh, archive is already exploded. So we'll quickly run this Eclipse EXE and see how it looks like. The moment you run it, it will ask for the sample workspace. So I'll quickly provide it the sample workspace. So this is the location that I want to use for uh, sample workspace. So I'll just paste it here and I'll continue from there. So it will simply open it. This is how the spring looks like in the very beginning. So you need to click on this. This will give you, uh, we can close the welcome window and uh, I'll, I normally prefer to remove the task list pane from here and move the outline here. That's the view I like to have. So this is the basic Eclipse project. How to test everything is working fine. You simply go and simply say a project, Java project, click on new, Eclipse test, next, finish, I don't want to move to Java perspective, I'll say no, I'll right click here, click on new, click on class, test class, com dot spring training, and I'll have a met main method. So there you go. I'll simply use a sysout to check whether everything is fine. I'll say hello eclipse. and right click on it and run as Java application. Your ID is up and running. But your ID itself is not sufficient because to run the servlets and the JSPs and the, the Spring Framework web related stuff you need to have the web server as well. So to run the J servlet or JSPs or any kind of web application you need the server as well. So I'll uh, download that as well. In this slide, this is the URL for Tomcat. So I've already mentioned before that I'll be using 6.0. This is what the 6.0 download looks like and you can select whatever machine uh, in environment do you have. So I have 64-bit machine, I'll download this zip. In this slide, you can also click on this to directly download the zip itself. What I've done is I've already downloaded it so I don't need to go there and down wait for download. So I've already explored it here as well. So this is the Apache Tomcat uh, workspace that it looks like. How to integrate it in Eclipse? Now uh, this is very easy. You have server tab. You just click on new server wizard and there you will already get a Tomcat 6 version here. You click on next. In the browse you simply pass on this URL wherever you have the installation. You click here and you click on next and that's it. Your uh, Tomcat is now ready to run. You move, run it and in the console it will say service startup in 60 seconds. So server is ready to uh, so ap serve any application. I'll quickly demonstrate it you, to you. I'll create a dynamic web project. Test Tomcat. Say I'll say 2.5 itself. Next. Test Tomcat is the war that I'm creating. And there it will automatically create the project structure for me. So within this I'll simply write a simple JSP. I'll say new JSP file test tomcat dot JSP. I'll simply say, say some take some basic markup and then in the HTML body I'll say h1 uh, wel welcome to Eclipse 
plus tomcat that's what the UI will look like so I'll simply run it I'll right click on this project I'll say run as run on server I'll select this server and click on next if the server is not running it will start it and it will simply launch me the application you can see the reason why it is not working is in the web entry we have not added the file in the web XML so I'll simply add it as welcome file and remove rest of the welcome files from here and in this case you will probably need to restart right click on a project run as run on server next finish and there you go so your JSP is rendered your servlet container and the JSP container is up and running but again you just have got the ID where you will run your Java applications your web server where you, which is the servlet container where you, you will run your uh, servlets and JSP now you need spring itself so for spring itself the spring jars and all you need you have next slide this is the URL where you can go and download the spring so I'll be using 3.0.1 uh, for our demonstrations for our samples this is the home page if I click on it 3.0.1 release so it will start directly start downloading it so what I'll do is I'll cancel it because I have already got it downloaded and it is important to note that this itself is not sufficient you have lots of spring dependencies as well so you need to download this as well uh, once you click on it you, or you paste it on the URL you will it will start downloading so once you click on this URL it will start downloading so I've already done that if you go here in the software you will say that 3.0 and 3.1 dependencies are already downloaded and, and exploded as well within 3.0.1 in the distribution you will say all these jars that are related to spring framework are downloaded here whenever we go on to the individual applications we'll see the details of it for now uh, don't worry about the details that what are the different jars and what did, what do they do and within dependency there are a lot of other things as well I need to demonstrate you a basic sample uh, a sample example of uh, spring spring can be uh, web based and can be standalone as well so I'll first uh, I'll just show you the standalone application spring test and I'll do next and I'll do a finish so it's a basic Java application within this Java application sorry spring test this Java application I need to have some basic uh, uh, spring code so I already have a basic spring code here a sample code I'll simply take this 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 I'll copy it here uh, these are basic pojos so it, it won't have cause any problems as long as this is this is compilable but this is need the spring jars this will need the spring library so what are the different ways of doing it the simplest is that you go to softwares you go to spring 3.0 and you go to distribution you copy it from here and you paste it here and you provide it into right click properties build path libraries add jars within this project you select all these jars and click on OK and that's it all the libraries are working fine so all the libraries are resolved that's one way of doing it but I won't recommend it otherwise you will need to create a copy of these projects in everywhere so I'll just remove it from the dependencies and I'll remove it from here as well the another way is to avoid multiple copies you simply say external jars and you select this path and add it in your external jars okay you select all the jars click on open and voila it, it is added no problems here it is compilable as well so what is the benefit uh, from the previous one you don't have to maintain a copy and you have it at a single location but you are still copying all the jars you are still selecting all the jars one by one so I would also not recommend this so instead of that proper way of uh, the way I do it is I create a user library so I create user library I create a new spring 3.0.1 and I click on OK and then say I I say add add external jars and I go to that path where I have downloaded the library and click on OK and I add everything here so all the jars that is needed is added here I would recommend that you all 
add all the jars in the beginning though you might not need all of them in the beginning you will be needing this context context and core and perhaps this expression as well but uh, if you're developing web application you might be needing this but uh, I would still recommend that you just while you are doing the learning part you add all the jars all the jars that is there in the distribution so you add it this is the user library and this user library is now what the benefit of this is any project that you add you can simply add go to add library and this in user library this you just click on it and it will be available to your new project let's click on ok and it will solve all your problem but the point is this itself is not alone we have to add the spring dependencies as well so I will create another libraries called spring dependencies and I'll simply add external jar within this external jar I need to add one important jar which is org apache common so I'll just go to org apache commons and within this I need to see the loggings and within this I'll just click on logging so that's added that's the bare minimum that you need for a spring so we have two dependencies added uh, spring 3.0 is uh, zero 01 is already added so I've added spring dependency this has logging and this is all the rest of the jars core jars so my application is now ready to be run don't worry about the details of this uh, code base we, have, we will definitely be seeing it in details so I'll simply run it to make sure everything is fine this is the core Java application this does not require any server so you can see the output is there this simply means that spring is all set to be run some people also prefer spring tool suit so you can go there a spring tool suit is built on Eclipse and uh, the VMware server that is uh, that comes along with spring tool suit is built on top of Tomcat so you can download from here and the version that you like this concludes this video related to setup so you have uh, this application ready you have the workspace ready where you can run the basic java applications you can run the web application and you can run the eclipse applications all three flavors are available to you